my goal at the end of it, I would love you guys to go, oh, that's a lot simpler. I can see the power of that. I, I'd like you to understand what can be done and why you might want to try it. The how part, the geeky how part, you can go onto YouTube and find any number of videos on how to do the, this particular thing or whatnot. But you, at the moment, you don't know what to search for. It's like you don't know what to, to try and figure out how to do. So I wanted, and I, I find that a lot of the YouTube channels are very geeky. They go into the, the techie stuff and there's not really much at the higher level to explain to a business owner so that the business owner goes oh i get it the penny and the penny drops now over the last 10 10 years i've been i've been doing google ads since 2009 actually i've often met people for a coffee they've they've said look andy i've heard you're good at google ads can we meet for a coffee and just I'll pick your brains and i'm like really <laughs> this is great i get to talk to somebody about my my subject matter you know give me my little soapbox for an hour and then they buy me a coffee like and i'm delighted but in those one hours I've chatted to people, I've just told little stories all the time and little of this and that. And, and I try to explain it in a non-technical way that so people understand what can be done and why. And then they go off happy and they can go and figure out the, the how part or hire somebody or whatever they want to do. But mm -hmm. so that's my goal is to explain what, to, what we want to do and why. And so that you understand it and see it clearly, the kind of the way I see it and all this technical stuff. Like there's so much in Google ads now that I'm like, Oh my God, what's that? When, when did that pop up? All right. And I can't keep up. So, it's a lot simpler, I think, than people look, kind of make out. Um, so I kind of want to start with maybe how I started back in 2009. I had a friend, right, so I was trying to build a website. Who's building a website in here? Um, mm, Pascal. Pascal, that's it. Yeah. I thought I learned how to build a website for my friend. He's an electrician. He's out of work. 2009, the kind of economy tanked. Built a website. Nothing happened. He had no phone calls because I didn't realize you have to do more than just build a website. You need to get people to the website. Fair enough. Learned about SEO. Okay, got a book about SEO. As I was flicking through it, a uh, voucher fell out of the book. This is when they're giving out vouchers, 50 euros, Google ads. It was called AdWords back then. I threw that into the account. Um, and I remember him ringing me and I was at work. I was in Dunn's stores in IT, good dude. And he went, Andy, I've had a phone call. I was like, oh my God, what? It works. This is amazing. And we, we got home. He got home and we he sat in his kitchen on the Friday evening. Okay, what other things do you do? Fuse board replacement, wiring and rewiring, um, you know, smoke detector installation, Dublin. There's so many landlords, they need to do this. It's that, oh, that's going to be my business. That's going to take off. Excellent. So I loaded all those things. We're bidding, obviously, on electrician in Dublin, electrician Kildare, and all this stuff like that. After the end, end of the a month, because I was a data dude for the Dunn stores, I, I looked at the data, right? So it had 300 clicks. It cost about 75 euros back then. So that was kind mm -hmm. of happy. And he had enough phone calls to be getting work in. So he was delighted because at that point, he'd had to hand his van back. You know, he was... It, you know, so it was in dire straits. He's handed his van yeah. back, a baby on the way, etc. So he had enough work to keep going. And I looked at the data and I was like, okay, there's been 300 clicks, but your ads showed 10,000 times. There were 10,000 impressions. That meant your ads were seen 10,000 times and 9,700 times people didn't click on them. They just sailed past. But what were they searching for? Okay, so like you had 300 clicks, but of the 10,000 impressions, what were they all looking for? And I, I said to him, well, okay, 2,000 of them were people looking for an electrician in Dublin. But you're in a really low ad position. It's super competitive. It's hard to get those clicks. Hardly any wiring and rewiring clicks uh, or impressions. And for fuse, uh, smoke detector installation, you've only had 12 impressions for like that in Dublin. So forget it. That business idea of where you're going to be a mil millionaire doing smoke detector installation ain't going to happen. But I said like 5,000 of your searches, half of them are to do with washing machine repairs, cooker repairs, or oven repairs. And it was like, oh my God, I, everybody is calling for that. I'm getting all these phone calls. They're looking for an electrician to fix a washing machine, a cooker. So I was like, oh my goodness, right. Um, let's throw away this electrical website I've been building. We built a washing machine repair website, DublinWashingMachineRepairs.com, DublinCookerRepairs.com, DublinOvenRepairs.com. We did the same for uh, Kildare. And now when somebody searched for washing machine repairs Dublin, they see an ad from Dublin Washing Machine Repairs. So our click-through rate just doubled overnight. It went 4% to 8% just overnight. Um, and its cost per click dropped a little bit because Google mm -hmm. rewards you if you have a, a, a better click-through rate. And we were able to bid more and get into high top ad position. That was it. That's like, he's, still got, he's still doing that. He's got like a little workshop in his back garden. And that's, that's his business. So me as a data dude, I was like, whoa, we found out for 300 euros sorry, 75 euros, 300 clicks, but 10,000 impressions. We found out what the market was looking for and that what we, the visitors that we could get to the website. So we could actually change what we were offering to match what they were searching for. So 
often when I speak to a business owner, businesses, they go, look, we're selling blue widgets. These brilliant blue widgets, best blue widgets on the market. I'll do some research. You go, yeah, but everyone's looking for red widgets. I'm like, yeah, I suppose we can make them red. Okay, make them red. <laughs> we'll sell that because that's what everyone's looking for, you know? So for me, like, one of the biggest benefits of Google ads is that you get to find out possibly on a whiff of spend, very low ad spend, what people are searching for so that you can potentially stand in front of them. Okay. So if, if people are looking for architects Wexford, then, and there's a ton of people and that's what they're looking for, then you can bid on that and you can stand there rather than trying to push something else, some other search or some other service that they're, they're looking for. So for me, that's one of the biggest benefits of Google ads is that you can actually on a very low ad spend count how often the ads show. You can load up loads of ads, set say a five euro a day budget or 10 euro a day budget and see of the 20 ads that you've loaded, which one gets the most impressions. I call it counting impressions. You count the impressions. You don't play, pay for the impressions. You don't pay when the ad shows. You pay when someone clicks on it. I've had businesses come to me and they've got 5,000 products. Go, Give me all the part numbers. We'll load them all up. Oh, those are the 10 um, part numbers that everyone's searching for. And they go, oh, yeah, those are the hydraulic pumps that are always breaking. They go, okay, there you go. So load those ones onto your website before you, and then get going before you load all 5,000 and then decide to get going. You know, so it, it, it can speed up the time that you get to market because you can get something up quickly, a very simple little website, a landing page, and then start running ads to it and count the impressions and find out what people are searching for. And they go, you know what? That one that we were hoping to build a page for, there's no point. <laughs> we can't get anyone to that page. Nobody's looking for it on Google. But that one over there, there's a ton of people searching for that. Let's go and build that one out. You've built the business case to actually then go and build the landing page. Right, so where's my pens? This is the part that I normally do with a flip chart. I'm a, fl I'm a stand up flip chart and guy and I bounce around the place. This might slow me down a bit. But what I learned early on, I, was, I, just, I just binged on podcasts and videos about, uh, about Google Ads. And I came across a guy and he described, now hopefully this is going to be the right way. Okay, so he described what he called the online buying life cycle of people when they go onto Google they initially start as a browser. So my wife might tell, is that back to front? <laughs> Can you see that back to front or the right way? No, that's perfect. Oh, okay, okay, I see it back to front, I don't know why, but, uh, right. So he's, my wife might come to me and say, you know, we can't go to Sanguli this year in Spain. Why don't we go glamping? And I, my, my, I might go, glamping? What the heck is glamping? So the first thing I'm gonna do when she's gone to bed is like Google glamping. Okay, so I'm sitting down and I'm browsing. We all know about browsing the internet and I've typed in glamping. That means I know nothing about glamping. The fact that I just typed in that one search term on its own, that one word on its own. If someone typed in London, it means I know nothing about London. They're trying to learn about London. I typed in glamping. It means I haven't got a clue. All right, I might, I might realize, oh, this is a camping without a tent and a bit nicer and you don't get cold and wet and all the rest of it. Not like I remember it as a kid. Brilliant. Let's, let's do a bit more research on this. So I might type in Glamping Island to find all the different locations in Ireland. So I've, I've become a researcher now. Okay, so I've gone from being a browser. I've got a bit, a bit between my teeth now and I'm typing in lots of different search terms and I'm learning a bit more. Oh, okay, there's glamping in Dingle. Oh, there's glamping in the Aran Islands. There's glamping here. Is there different types of glamping? I don't know. Can, what if pets and can you park near them? All this sort of stuff. So I've gone from being a browser just casually to now I've, I'm, I'm researching. Okay, and then at some point I might decide, you know what, I really like this. Tell me wife, yeah, let's, let's do the glamping. Um, and we might become shoppers and we might be online actually typing in, right, okay, what dates are these open and how far is it? Okay, the Aran Islands, I always wanted to go to Galway and stay there. Yeah, that would work. If we go to Galway, go to, how does that boat thing work to get across there? Like how many times a day? What can, and then we might even be searching for, like, this is part of the research of like things to do in the Aran Islands, you know? So we're, we're doing all this research, trying to figure out our trip. But at no point, if you had like a, a glamping pod or whatever they're called i don't know glamping site on the aran islands you can't get me to book when i'm still browsing going what's a glam what is glamping okay if i'm doing research glamping island and this and that i'm not going to book yet i might come to your site and read your stuff and then exit out and i might come back later on all right so and i, and I might get my information as a shopper go oh okay that one's good uh, but if i want to dingle that oh god that's really far to do it you know so i'm shopping and at some point i might go you know what I want to buy. So I become a buyer and we go, right, Aran Island's glamping. 
is what we're going to do. And that is a search term that I typed before, but maybe there's a name of a glamping place in Aran Islands. I think it's actually called Aran Islands Glamping. Okay, so we that's the brand name. We type that in uh, because we're ready to buy now. So what happened with my brother-in-law is that we found loads of buyer search terms. Okay, people were searching washing machine repairs Dublin, cooker repairs Dublin, oven repairs Dublin. I was like, oh, okay, uh, versus just washing machine repairs. When they just typed in washing machine repairs, they were kind of doing a bit of research of like, mm, is this how much is it going to cost? Um, can I do this myself? Like window repairs Dublin, you might be typing that in and looking for, no, sorry, window repairs, you might be typing that in because you're looking for a YouTube video on how to do it yourself, unlikely, but you might be. But if you type in window repairs Dublin, you've gone, kind of gone through all this phase and or, or, or just skipped it entirely and went, you know what, I need to ring somebody. So a good little, okay, so this is like the online buying life cycle. But what I like to think about is that these buyers here, they're searching, if you can see that, with a credit card in hand. They've got a credit card in hand and everyone else over here is searching with a cup of coffee in hand. Okay, so at some point, I don't know where the line is, back here, these people are all info seekers. They're all looking for information and they've got a cup of tea in their hand or a cup of coffee in hand. They've got no intention of buying from you. If you buy those visitors and get them to your website, they may come back later on, but at that moment in time, they're sitting with a cup of coffee in their hand. Their credit card is firmly in their pocket, all right? Yes, it might be good to get them to your website, but it would be better to get all the people who are running down this hill, just go and stand at the bottom of the hill, and they're running down with a credit card in hand saying, I need to give my money to somebody, really. The best thing to do is just sit at the bottom of the hill and catch them all and take the orders, okay? It's like me going into the shop... Oh God, where's my phone? Oh, my phone's, uh, I went into a shop a while ago and said, right, I'd like an iPhone 5 SE because they're nice and small, black and with 16 gig memory. And he just took me order. He said, we haven't got a black one, we've got a pink one. I was like, okay, I'll do pink. I'll have the pink one. Can I get a black case to go over it? Thanks. That was it. And I walked out. Now he didn't have to convince me what phone to get. I already went in and I said, I want this in this color and this amount of memory. I was a buyer. I came in with my credit card out. Okay, so he was an order taker. So for me, you, when you do Google Ads or maybe any kind of online marketing, I would suggest, this is why I like Google Ads, you've got people on Google who are literally searching with a credit card in hand, looking to give their money to somebody. Architect Wexford. They might not have the credit card in hand, they might have the phone in hand. They want to speak to somebody. If they're just looking for architects, you don't want that person landing on your website potentially, especially if they're in Cork. Yeah, you don't want somebody landing on your website who's just typed in architects. It might be a kid going, oh, I want to be an architect when I grow up. I wonder what they do for a living. Yeah, or architect salary. You don't want those people landing on your website. You want people who are typing in architects Wexford. Okay, does that make, does that make sense? This is one of my favorite doodles. It made a lot of sense to me. It can be simplified. I, I like to think of people as being info seekers or buyers. Do they have a cup of tea in their hand or do they have a credit card? And... A lot of people, when they're on, say, Google, uh, Facebook or YouTube, they might be look, they're, in for, they're entertaining themselves. You know, they're watching videos and the rest of it. Uh, they could be on YouTube, for instance, typing in searches, le typically to, know, to learn how to do something or to know something or just uh, for entertainment. Um, I like Google itself because when people go to Google and they type in family lawyer Dublin, I mean, that's not a search you type in for fun that person is doing it with a phone in hand. They've got a problem. They want to find somebody. Okay. They want to ring somebody or potentially like office chairs and maybe the brand of it. That person potentially wants to buy it. So they've got a credit card out, possibly shopping. And that's kind of the gray area where you get some people to the website and not everybody's going to buy. Okay. So buyers versus info, info seekers. So on Google itself, and I did, this is where I was, I, I went and created loads of slides last night and I went, you know what? I'm bored. I'm boring myself. I create, I, I, had a look at all the different types of ads that you can have with Google ads, because not all of the ads run on Google. So you can have the ads that run, uh, they're called display ads, image ads that can run on blogs. So you might have a blog about glamping and you might have your ad showing on that blog and a nice image ad showing your, your glamping pod or whatever it's called in Dingle or, or the Aran Islands. You could actually run an ad on YouTube as a video ad. And we've, we've done that for quite a few clients. And it, and it can appear before the video that somebody's um, 
somebody wants to watch and it, you can really have those little skippable ones you can skip after five seconds or you can have ones that you can't skip and they're really short anyway um, you can have like ads appearing when someone searches on on youtube you can have like these text ads appearing so you've got, got ads appearing all sorts of places including in gmail as well you can have ads in gmail you can have something youtube you can have video ads on youtube you can have ads on search partners like ask.com so your ads might appear there but for me i always like to start with ads on google itself the google search engine so that you can get to find out like i said before how many people are searching for specific products or services that you're selling so that you as a business owner might go didn't realize how many people were looking for that you know whatever it is at the minute uh, social distancing posters phew, that's gone through the roof you know perspex screens and stuff like that i think any business owner would know that's happening but potentially if you were bidding on lots of things you might see something suddenly spike and you would have no clue why it's like why is everybody looking for water damage in wexford and then you find out there's been a flood or something yeah so if you're bidding on lots of things you get to find out in your account sorry on google what people are searching for and if there's spikes if things drop off so um and then the other reason yeah okay so if we think about this what's happening here now a real smart business you're gonna you're gonna run ads and try and get in front of the buyers first a couple of reasons one they've got a credit card out and they want to give the money to someone so you know maybe you're the guy to take it off them the other one is if you can't sell to these people you're gonna have a much harder time selling to all these other people okay because these people haven't quite decided that they want to buy yet so these I class this as demand fulfillment there's demand there already on Google people are looking to buy so you, what you're selling so why not just fulfill the demand that's already there? It's almost criminal that in the next few days, there might be somebody looking for, our, uh, what is it, Belgian chocolate, you know, in, in whatever county you're in. Belgian chocolate, Wexford, if you're in Wexford, and you're not there on Google because they're, they're going to give that money to someone else. These, this other stuff here, I almost class that as demand generation. So people are like, oh, glamping. They go on and then maybe maybe if you get that person who just typed in glamping onto your website and then you explain, well, glamping's great. <laughs> you, you realize that their start of their search cycle, glamping is this. This is what glamping is. This is why it's great and shows some little videos and get people to go, oh, you know what? That actually looks really good because what you've got to bear in mind is someone hits this page and they're looking for glamping uh, Aran Islands. They don't want to learn what glamping is. They've already figured it out. Yeah. So if someone's looking for office chairs, uh, black and a certain brand, you don't send them a page and explain why an office chair is good for you and why you should buy an office chair. I call this a presumed close. When someone walks into a bar, the barman doesn't say, oh, listen, it'd be, it's a hot day. Why don't you have a nice pint? They just say, well, what, what do you want to drink? Okay. Whereas this part here, you know, if you can like, this, this is demand generation, I, I, I call, call it. And if you could, if you like satisfy these and sell to these people and then you also get found as people search at all these points like glamping glamping island glamping aran islands obviously if you're in the aran islands if you get found at each of those points the person searching and you educate them and give them what they're looking for so if they're looking for information you give them information then you might they might go oh this is uncle zeno i i'm gonna i trust uncle zeno now i instead of going googling and going to a website and reading something and coming back and googling and going to another site and going backwards and forwards which is kind of tedious i'm going to stick on his website and i'm going to learn all about this stuff oh glamping is good for this that the next thing bear in mind this and get your car whatever i'm going to stay on his website and you educate them bring up this hill instead of them having to do it and then if they're looking to purchase then hey i trust uncle zeno now let's go buy off him so this is sort of demand generation obviously building like and uh, no like and trust as well and then you're getting people to this point point is if you can't sell to them when they're ready to buy when you get the buyers to your website then if you get them all educated and whatnot they might still not buy from you so that's why i like to start here a there's money uh, that could be going in your pocket today or tomorrow if, if you just get this part running but also if you haven't got these parts set up then when you start educating people get to the point where they buy and then your shopping cart doesn't work but you know you've kind of wasted a lot of your time here all right okay so i've got loads of these i'm trying to whiz through them so that's why i like starting with ads on, with ads on google uh, there's a phrase i like to use is like what's better than low-hanging fruit you know like if i want to make an apple pie and i've got an apple tree in the back garden go out and get the low-hanging fruit 
for me, Google paid search, there's already apples falling out the tree. Just literally go under and put your apple, yeah, put your basket underneath. And then the thing is, if you go do that, if you go and put your ads up on Google and nobody's really searching for your product or services because they don't know about it yet, you have no ad spend because nobody searches, the ads don't show, nobody clicks. Okay, so but just have them there. And then you can start doing your stuff on social media and people go, oh my goodness, I never thought about like getting a log cabin as an office. That's a great idea. Then they go to Google. So what you're actually doing is you're starting to generate the demand and this people will start going from reading a newspaper ad or seeing something on Facebook or TV. They will start going to Google and typing in those searches. So I equate that as like shaking the tree. You're shaking the apple tree, more apples are going to fall out. And if you haven't put your apple, your basket underneath the tree, what's going to happen is those apples are going to fall into other businesses' baskets. You know, so if you, if somebody's going home and they're reading on the uh, on the newspaper about a, ho a home office or a pod or whatever they're called in the garden, it's like, oh, that's a great idea. They forget about it. They get home. They forget about it. Well, I can't remember the name of the business, but I'm now going to look at home home offices or lo log cabins or whatever it was, pods, home. You know. So they do that search and they find all your competitors on Google. So for me, it's like put the ads, put, get the ads running on Google, put the baskets under the tree, even if there's no apples falling out, then you go and uh, generate more demand and shake, get more apples fall out of the tree. And just a quick story on that. We ran ads for a, uh, they're a private investigators firm in Athlone, I think. This was years ago. And we were bidding on their brand name and we were bidding on the, the founder's name, the guy who set up the business. I can't remember his name, but... Uh, one Sunday, he brought out uh, an article in the Sunday Business Post about mystery shopping, how to do mystery shopping and all the rest of it. Lots of advice, good advice. And at the bottom, there was a little bio. It was written, you know, it had a little bio about him, that he'd set up this uh, uh, private investigator's firm, what his name was, what his background was. And on the Monday, we saw a spike in people searching for his name. So him bringing out the newspaper generated a lot of uh, people going to Google on the Monday to find out more about him. And we had the little ad running and we sent people to the website. So uh, it's also another good way where you can actually detect how some of your other efforts online or offline are actually increasing brand awareness. If you're bidding on your brand name, you might see it starting to go up. Um, so <laughs> yeah, bid on your brand name is like, one of my first tips for a business, uh, especially if you're a hotel or something and you're, you're, you're in with booking.com or Travago or whatnot, they will bid on your brand name and they will, they will basically steal your repeat business and referral traffic and sell it back to you like 14, 15%. But if you bid on your own brand name, you typically will get a better click-through rate because you're, that people can see the domain name as being actually the hotel. And if your click-through rate starts getting up nice and high, Google just stops showing their other people's ads. So they don't, they don't show on your brand name. We're actually just done this for a client this week, bidding on their brand name, and we're getting about 50% click-through rate, 50 to 60% click-through rate. And his cost per click in the UK at the minute is about seven cents. It's ridiculous. It's super low. You could argue those people who were searching for my brand name were going to buy anyway, or they're just going to log into our website or whatever it is. But what you're doing is you're protecting your brand by having an ad above it. You get to change the copy in the, in the ad instantly. Maybe there's an, uh, an offer for August. You can just change it. You get to split test different um, wording in the ad. Let's say as a business owner, it's like if you're selling wedding rings, it's like, well, do I have affordable wedding rings on my website? Do I have Celtic wedding rings, or custom wedding rings? Do I have cheap wedding rings? Like cheap wouldn't be a good idea, you could guess. But if you put all three ads to split test and people just typed in wedding rings and you found more people typed in, uh, clicked on custom wedding rings, then that tells you something about what, what you should maybe have on your landing page. We do custom Celtic wedding rings, you know? Okay, so it's a great tool as a business owner to find out, A, what people are searching for, preferably what they want to buy, preferably, you know, so you want to find out in marketing, and in business, like what we want to do is find out what people want to buy. What do people want to buy? Let's sell it to them. Okay. If we can find that out, and I think Google's a great tool for finding that out, then our next step is like, well, how do we sell it to them? And that's where you can split test the ads to find out, well, which ad appeals most. Like, so that client, they, there's a subscription box for dogs, goodies every month. And their first month is free. And I, I was like, okay, first month free. So I put first, F-I-R-S-T, month free and F first one ST month free in the ad. And I split tested two and I was like, well, I think the one with the number one is going to win. And it did. It won by quite a bit. It's because the, the eye is just attracted to numbers like hundred percent free, for instance, will attract the eye more than just free will, you know, little things like that. But 
so so what we do as business owners we want to find out what what do people want to buy how do we sell it to them can we do it at a profit and then we want to do it and by the time you've got all this data in google ads it's either working or not so you can either fail it give it a bullet or it's already working when you now want to scale it but for me that it's the the market intelligence you get as a business owner that that really makes google ads such a great tool it's, it's even more than the visitors you get to website i mentioned before that i don't like the word traffic right so i'm a kind of digital marketer but i try not to use the word traffic i was getting my hair cut I was chatting to the barber and he was like how's your week going somehow in my ramble i mentioned traffic i wasn't I was trying to get traffic to a client website and he was like traffic he stopped and looked out the window at the road and was like okay so no not everybody knows what traffic is but Here's the thing, as, as business owners, we shouldn't be using words that dehumanize people. They're visitors to our website. It's not a click. We didn't buy 20 clicks yesterday. We bought visitors. We had visitors come to our website. When someone typed in divorce lawyer, fat Edinburgh, that's like a terrible, you know, they're in, they're in misery, aren't they? You know, that, that, what people type into Google, that little search box, it's like a little letter box. It's like looking into their, into their living room or into their soul. They've typed something for a reason and it could be quite a terrible reason, you know, like funeral directors, X, Y, Z location, divorce lawyers. And there's lots of things people will go to Google and type in searches that they'll never ask on, you know, Facebook. Does anyone know a good electrician? They're not going to say, does anyone know a good, you know, child solicitor or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. Andy, okay. just one or two questions there. Oh yeah. Brilliant. Uh, people is, is um, uh, Joanne asks, is, thanks for, uh, thank you for a great event. Can I ask, what is a good CRT that Google will reward? Oh, CTR, right. Click through. Oh, sorry, right. sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. CTR, sorry, sorry. Oh, we're actually just about, to, yeah, perfect. That's exactly what we're going to talk about. Okay, and then there's uh, other ones. So yeah, I just, CTR, I just quickly yeah. run through them and then you can answer them yeah. as you're going along. Yeah. Um, Karen asks, is how much is your SEO impacted when paying for ads and does it get a boost? And then Barbara was asking what a term name for ads that follow you around uh, when you do, when they do stop following you <laughs> and yeah. are they expensive? And then, right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. So, I will, uh, so we'll, we'll work through them ones first and then we have the other ones. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't believe your SEO your organic listings are helped by Google ads. Slight caveat is, look, I'm not an SEO person, but I do have friends who are SEOs and like, because it's this, it's this, the other side of the coin. It's two sides of the same coin. You're trying to get visitors from Google to your website. So SEO means getting your page ranked so that you get the free clicks. And I put it in air quotes because they're not really free because you've had to spend time and money to either create some content and get it ranked or get links or whatever you have to do to get that ranked, okay? Um, and then you've got like the paid ads. Now, if people go to your website after going to Google and typing in a search term and they stay a long time and they go around the website and maybe even they convert and you've got Google Analytics then maybe Google figures that, figures that actually maybe that page is relevant to to that search term. So maybe if you send people from ads, maybe it will help. I don't know. I actually don't know. My, my SEO friends say they think it might do. I believe that on YouTube, if you send visitors to a, um, a YouTube video, right? So you bid on keyword, your video shows up, people click on it. If they watch all the way through to the end and Google sees a lot of people watching to the end, then Google's going to think that, well, that video is a good video for that keyword, for that search term that somebody's typed in. So therefore, maybe we'll start showing that uh, organically. I mean, it's Google's, Google's goal is to keep people using Google, not spend a long time on Google, by the way. It's different. Facebook's goal is to keep people on Facebook spending as long as possible because then they can show more ads. Google's goal is to get you on and off as quick as possible. So you go on, you type a search, you see a brilliant ad that absolutely matches what you search for. You click on it and you're gone. Mm. And therefore you use Google as your platform to go and find stuff. So you go, hmm, next time I'm going to go to Google. We all do it. We all Google stuff. But if all the ads were rubbish and all the listings were rubbish, we'd stop using Google be like oh there's something else it's better duck duck go or maybe yahoo bing or whatever that has got a bit better so we'll go to those ones so it's in google's interest for the most relevant results and the most relevant ads to show on the page 
So if we can, whatever we can do to convince Google that we have a better, um, a more relevant ad that more people are going to click on, but not just click on, but stay on our website, not clicking, oh, damn, that's the wrong one and back out within, you know, bounce within two seconds, Google's going to measure all that. And anything that helps them figure out that you're the best result is going to help you. So it's in our interest to be the most relevant result because that helps Google and then creates a win-win. It's a three-way three -way win because mm -hmm. like the, 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 the user on Google Very good. Um, likes it. Very okay, good. So I hope that helps. Does it help? I don't know. But like what I have said to people who are going to write SEO and Google ads. I'm like, right. Okay. Why don't you start with Google ads? You've got five. What, I mean, what do you want to rank top for SEO wise? Well, these search terms. Okay. Well, what's the search volume for those? How often do those people convert? Does your landing page help when people hit the page? Do they buy or do they inquire or what, what do they do? Don't know yet. Well, and what, but more importantly, what's the search volume? Are you going to spend time and effort building this page out and then find out afterwards that there's actually not much search volume? Obviously an SEO is going to do all the keyword research find out what people are searching for and then then try and obviously rank for it for me i'll be like right okay i can bid on like a thousand words ten thousand keywords if you want and tell you at the end of it which uh, end of a week or end of two weeks which 10 have the most volume and out of the 10 you can go eh, they're not great the margin on those products isn't as good as those three let's get, focus on those three let's build pages for those and let's rank those for seo so, so really me, so yeah. really it's more it's more it's more doing it in reverse as in looking at the re looking out first and then going and building in a sense yes. so yes. really yeah simplifying it that 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 you know and that's that's something even i wouldn't have thought i would be the right way to do i would sort of go the other way and say oh well, yeah. this is what i want on the website and instead it's the opposite way around yeah and, okay and, Another question that came in from Debbie was, is if I'm selling a product, say a desk, uh, with lots of options uh, available, am I best to focus only on my brand name desk or should I look, for, uh, look at the generic terms desk too, knowing that I'm competing against huge budgets from even the likes of IKEA? Right. My advice is, try and get profitable as soon as possible that like we'd all we'd all like to do that profitable from day one would all, <laughs> would be nice for all of us yeah so how are you going to get profitable uh, first off is bidding on your brand name okay you could like i said you could argue that those people are going to visit your website anyway so but your cost per click could be so damn low when you do it and you're protecting your your brand next one is yeah bid on uh, branded products maybe you only bring out a product that's you're the only people who bring out this particular product. That's the product name bid on those so that nobody else is bidding on them and stealing them. Okay. And then what you, what will happen when you do that, if it's a brand new Google ads account or, or been running a while, you'll get a nice click through rate because you're actually the website that provide, you are the brand. So your click through rate 50, 60%. If it's a brand, somebody's looking for the AA and you're running an ad on it. Cause I, I worked in there doing their campaigns, 60% click through rate. Okay, they've got the ad, all the other people trying to compete and pull, you know, steal their branded traffic, but bang, we've got a 60% click-through rate, low cost per click, protecting a brand and getting a nice high click-through rate on our account, which Google likes. Okay, so somebody asked uh, about click-through rate. What's a good click-through rate? It, de it depends. <laughs> it depends on what you're bidding on, what the competition is. Are you, is, are you the brand? Also depends uh, what your, you know, did I say what your position is, like how competitive it is. Are you in low ad position? Are you in high ad position? What Google's going to do is going to compare your click-through rate for your competitors in the same position. If you've got a better click-through rate, here's the beauty of this. If you've got a better click-through rate than everyone else in the same position, say there's four of us, there's, there's Debbie, Zeno, Andy, and, and Alan, all bidding on Architects Wexford, okay? We're all bidding on that. And Zeno's website is Architects Wexford, and we're all, I don't know, Just Answer or, I don't know, Bark or something like that. Zeno get, gets a better click-through rate than the rest of us, okay? So Google's going to reward Zeno with a lower cost per click. Brilliant. He's delighted with that. But here's the other thing. If there's four of us all bidding, let's say there was only one ad slot and we're all in position one, Google's going to give us 25% impression share because there's four of us. It's going to round robin between us, okay? And if, let's say there's 100 searches in the week, well, we all get 25 impressions with our 25% impression share. But if more people click on Zeno's ad, Google makes money, more money from Zeno. Yeah. 
If mm. like we've all got a 1% click through rate and he's got 5%, Google's going to go, <laughs> why are we showing these other lads? We'll show him more often. So his impression share will go up as well. So not mm. only will you show 25% of the time, you might show 50, 60, 80% of the time. And we, our, our ads campaigns suddenly fall off a cliff because our click through rate wasn't good enough because we're not giving enough money to Google. That's what it means. If your click through rate's high, you're giving more money to Google, they go, we're going to show you more often. And yeah. we're not show your competitors because you're doing better than them. And why is that? It's because you, why they base it all on the click-through rate is because our ad is obviously more relevant. Sorry, Zeno's ad is more relevant. And they want, the, they want the Google platform to be more relevant because then people will use it. If they don't, if it's not as relevant, if they awarded Andy with his 1% click-through rate, then people are going to leave. Not use, sorry, the users, the actual clients or the customers for Google are the users they're all going to bugger off. And if they all go, then all the advertisers are going to go. So their model yeah. falls over. So that, that's, that's, that's the beauty of it. And like, yeah. if you can have a better click-through rate, then your competitors in the same ad position, then you will get rewarded with a low cost per click. And that's Google tells everyone that. That's so that everyone goes, oh, damn, I must work on my click-through rates. So that's how they get us to do, do what they want us to do. But the, the other unpublicized benefit is that your impression share goes up your ad show more often and everyone else gets squeezed out and they're all going oh my god what's happening our campaigns are not working as well what's wrong with our ads and this and that and they don't realize that actually someone else is doing a better got a better ad than you and they're showing more often mm. um, yeah. Sarah asks the question she says silly question and there's no such thing Sarah as a silly question um, uh, but in this context what does bidding mean you spoke oh, about bidding oh, yeah okay so this is one of the biggest mistakes people make. Okay, so I talked about the SEO guys and the keywords. They're going to say, well, what keywords? Is, um, so, Karen, what keywords do you want to rank top for? And you'll, and you'll be like, well, sorry, you're not, I know you're not Belgian chocolate. We never said, but Belgian chocolate and this and that and the next thing. Okay, right. They call what people type into Google keywords. Okay, if you are using Google ads and you call what people type into Google keywords, you're probably making what was one of the biggest mistakes I see because you will go and then put those words into your account, assuming that they're the same thing and they're not. Okay. A keyword for me is what I bid on. It's the, the phrase that I bid on and the search term is what somebody types into Google. And I am very, very careful to make sure I talk about search terms and keywords and make them separate. What someone types into Google is a search term. A keyword is what I bid on. And if so, Architects Wexford, I might bid on Architects Wexford in exact match, put square brackets around it, which means I only show when somebody types in Architects Wexford as their exact search term. Now, if I put in Architects Wexford in phrase match, then I'm bidding on a phrase match keyword and I might, I might bid one euro on that keyword. In which case, I, in that example, Architects Wexford, I could, have best, I could show for best Architects Wexford but I wouldn't show for best architects in Wexford because there's an in in between, in the, in between those two words. And I was bidding on a phrase match. All right, so there's different match types that you can bid on for your keywords. And what those keywords do is they just match a set of search terms. It's super important to realize a keyword matches a set of search terms. And if you bid poorly, then you will get a poor click-through rate. So we were talking about click-through rate before. The best way to improve your click-through rate is to get your ads to show in front of people who are searching for what you're, is in your ad okay uh, so years ago i uh, worked in a company uh, 35 google ads specialists in a room in rathmines it's like a sweatshop all the tables are all different colors at different angles and it's like a little trading floor and we were spending 120,000 euros a day on google ads people but right so and i was their analyst so i got to see a lot of data and i got to see a lot of like accounts and what was happening a million clicks a day we were buying and there was i remember looking at one a girl's account and she was bidding on london just london with no let me let me draw it let me draw this out she was just bidding on london on its own hopefully you can see that right way around and i just told her to make it like this oops put it in quotes make it a phrase match keyword so we're bidding on that whoever has asked about bidding i'm hoping this this makes makes sense we're bidding on that and she, maybe she was bidding 20 cents so we've been on 20 cents there. So when okay. you say when you say bidding, so bidding is is like okay, I'm going to spend 20 cent on this. And that's this your, is, no, that's what your bid price is. You might you'll spend up to 20 cents. 
Okay, so yeah. I can go up to twenty. So the, okay. Yeah, right. okay, your bid price is uh, so an auction. You say I, I want to. I'm yeah. I'm prepared to pay twenty cents. Okay. Yeah, but you might oh, end yeah. up paying right. So for that client where we're bidding on their brand name this week, we're bidding. We were bidding two euros just to get the Google algorithm to notice we were. Hey, hello. We want to appear. We're in the auction mm -hmm. now. We're new. Then we dropped it to one euro. You know what they're paying? They're paying one, uh, seven cents. Even though we've been one euro, we're only paying seven cents because our click-through rate is about 60%. Right. Our okay. click-through rate's so high, Google's gone, you know what? Yeah, <laughs> we'll give this to you all practically free. Brilliant, love it. Very yeah? good, very good. Okay, so what this girl was doing was bidding on London because she wanted to appear for all sorts of things. Cause, and we had an ad for a London hotel. And I was looking at the search term, so that's the keyword. Oh, God. Key, keyword was that. I was looking at all the search terms. In Google, if you're bidding on a certain keyword, when someone clicks your ad, you get to find out what the search term is. You don't get to find out the search term unless they click on the ad. So you start getting data. And I was looking at this, and we, some of the keywords, some of the, sorry, some of the search terms that came through, there was three, what was it? British Army. Our ad had showed when somebody typed in British Army. Like, we're bidding on London, Google, but because our bid price was so damn low, Google just showed us for loads of junk. British Army, and, but here's with somebody actually clicked the ad. Why did, they, why did they click our ad about a London hotel when they typed in British Army? Another one that he typed in was uh, UK sexy girls. I was like, okay, fine, <laughs> don't we'll leave it to that. Okay, <laughs> and then the weirdest one was YouTube. Somebody typed, that was one of the search terms that came up. Somebody had typed in YouTube, seen an ad for London hotels and clicked on it. Maybe a misclick, maybe just a trigger happy. Couldn't work it out. And they were like, well, hold on, that's, but there's a tube in London. Maybe Google's like, there's a tube, the underground is called a tube. Maybe that's close enough. I don't know. But so what, what I was saying, was, said to her, was like, look, hold on. By bidding on London in broad match without the quotes around it, you're not insisting that the word London is in the search term. Just at least do that, please. Just do that. And what happened is their click-through rate went up. Her impression share went up. Her ad started showing more often. Her cost per click started dropping as well. And that campaign, it actually turned it around just by literally putting these little quotes in. Yeah, so the simplest, yeah. of, things, simplest yeah. of things like that can actually make a huge, massive difference. Yeah, but mm. it turned out, and I get this a lot when I've chatted to people over the years, it's because people keep calling what people type into Google a keyword when it's not yeah. it's a search term. So they go, oh, I want it to appear when people type in London. So I'm going to put London in as my keyword. And we're like, no, 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 that's not, that's the search term. The keyword London with no quotes around it means it could show for any old junk that might not even include London. Yeah. So yeah. Make, it should be, be very specific as well. Yeah. Um, and the more specific you are, just, sorry, what were you going to, you're about to say something? No, no, I was just going to say, there was another question here is, is that from Warren, he says, hello, I am, uh, I have an ongoing website. My business is B2B focused on HR consulting yeah. um, for leave uh, management. And I want to focus on companies in NYC. So I presume that's New York City. Yeah. Um, since I'm located in NYC and how do I start a campaign? Thank you. Right. Okay. So kind of similar to what we're saying for Zeno. And this, th these are great questions because uh, these are, I'm just getting ahead of myself, but I'm, we're covering these. We're going to cover these, but now I've got a real life thing to, to go through. Search terms. Remember we've got buyers versus info seekers. So if someone types in HR consultants, uh, I, 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 look, that's not something you type in for fun. They're probably looking for a HR consultant unless they're thinking of becoming a HR consultant or doing research about, well, what are these doing? But, you know, there's somewhere in that, um, gosh, you can't find it. Some, I took it off. There's somewhere in here doing some research. Okay. But if they type in HR consultants, NYC, yeah, then they've got a phone in their hand. They're looking to talk to somebody or they're prepared to fill in the inquiry form. So the first sort of keyword you'd bid on for that one this uh, is actually quite cool. It's better than the flip chart, which was all this sort of stuff. Right. So you might have HR consultants. Uh, sorry. NYC. Now, I would put pluses. If you can see that, it's a plus in front of each word. Uh, if you can see that, HR, yeah. HR uh -huh. consultants, NYC. Yeah, I haven't got loads of space. With a plus in front. That's called modify phrase 
uh, modified broad match or something like that. I call it, I just call it mod broad for sure. And what you're saying is you want each of those words to be in the search term in any order. So you, someone could say NYC HR consultants and you'd still kind of, you'd still el eligible to show. It doesn't mean you will show and possibly with other words in between. So if someone typed in HR consultants, NYC exact, you're eligible to show you you're bidden on with that keyword. It matches that search term is matched uh, in a set of search terms that this keyword is, uh, can show for. Okay. So there's your keyword here. There's all these search terms, thousands of them that you're eligible to show show, show for the exact match one, any uh, phrase match one, you could show for that. I typically just start with that one. It's tight enough. Okay, but what you want your ad to say then is exactly what they've typed in, yeah? NYC HR consultants, yeah? This is why I like Google because I'm a, I'm a simple bloke. When my wife says no to something and she really meant yes, I, can't, I don't get it. I need to know exactly what's going on. If someone types in HR, HR consultants NYC, I know exactly what they're looking for and I can put it in the ad. If someone types in HR consultant jobs nyc they're not looking for the same thing and i know that that's great i can tell so for that one you'd want a negative of jobs job minus jobs and probably a negative of job negative of courses or certifications all that kind of stuff all right so they, so they thought you would put them into they put you put them in when you're doing that is is this when you actually are saying that you don't want to be searched for jobs you don't want to be searched for that so yeah. what it means is, is is that obviously it's not they're not going to show up and it's going to cost you less money because obviously the more people that click on that the higher your 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 money goes you yeah yeah charged. not only are yeah. you spending yeah. more but if you're showing for jobs and you are a hr consultant they're not going to click on your ad yeah so exactly. you're, you're like oh that's okay they're not clicking on me ad i'm not paying yeah but like your click-through rate now is is really poor the easiest way, right, your click-through rate is, um, num uh, hold on. So really the click-through rate is probably one, is the most important part of it. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Click CTR is, well, yeah, no, profits. <laughs> profits well, is, yeah, well, yeah. That, well, that yeah, 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 right. So we've well, got to remember, CTR, all these geeky stuff that a person like me, a media buyer might throw at you. Their KPIs, key performance indicators, the actual performance you as a business owner care about is how many profits you're making or your margin is. Is it the products you want to sell? You as a business owner, you've got the actual performance. These, yeah, so bottom in your account. Line. Bottom line, really. Yeah, yeah bottom line. <laughs> but then even the right bottom line, is it like yeah, kind exactly. of part of the business that you uh, want to grow? The positive bottom line, as they say. Yeah, <laughs> so you've got clicks divided, right. Right. Your CTR is your clicks divided by impressions. The quickest, the easiest way to improve your CTR is to reduce your impressions. Is to don't show for the junk. Don't show for when somebody's looking for British Army when you've got a hotel in London. That's just crazy. What are you doing? Don't show when somebody's looking for a job when you're, you haven't got jobs because they're not going to click on your ad. So reduce your impressions. Same number of clicks from the people who are looking for HR consultant NYC. So your CTR has gone up. Yay, so Google rewards you with lower cost per click and all the, and impression share going up, all that kind of stuff. And what I said before, so, right, so that's the simplest way is to not show for junk. Get your targeting right in the first place. Then the other way is you just literally, this is what I like about Google, whatever they type in is what you put in the ad. Somebody's looking for washing machine repairs Dublin, ad says Dublin washing machine repairs. If somebody's looking for washing machine repairs, Rath Mines, yeah, it says Rath Mines washing machine repairs. I'll tell you, that's how I beat people. That's how our campaigns were running so well. There's a hundred locations in Dublin, Rath Mines, Swords, Daenery, Black Rock, all the rest of it. We're bidding on every single one of those and the ad matches. The ad absolutely matches what they're searching for. If you go searching for washing machine repairs, Rath Mines, everyone else says Dublin washing machine repairs. Ours stands out. When we, so, that's how you increase your click-through rate. Get rid of unwanted impressions and then make sure your ad matches what people are searching for. And I call it the holy trinity of paid search. I'm just going completely off script now. <laughs> just, yeah. uh, just. The, other, the other question is, is yep. how um, Barbara put in here, sorry, I have a fan on here. Um, another fan. Um, how does a business owner find out the cost of a uh, keyword? Oh, right, that's a Google Keyword Planner. 
and I might get time to show you, but I can link it later on. Little, well, we I've done we little videos. Up, we, can, yeah, we can put up. We can put up one or two videos. In yeah, the, right. The, what you do is you go to the Google Keyword Planner. Brilliant tool. I think every business owner should know how to use yes, it. It's, it's really fabulous. simple. You type in a few th search terms like HR consultant NYC. You put that in. Google's going to give you like potentially hundreds of suggestions or close like HR companies, HR freelancers. I don't know if that's such a thing. All these other words. And they're not just NYC. It might give you flipping zip codes and all sorts of stuff. And then, then you go, oh my God, people search for zip codes. And then, so if you're a local service business, a little trick that I use in the Google Keyword Planner is I might, let's say you're, you're, you're selling something in the UK and it's in a small town. <laughs> I'm trying to think of small town. Sw I don't know, Swindon. It's not that small, but say you're selling something Rockland. in Swindon. <laughs> Rockland. Carlisle. That's where I'm from, actually. <laughs> so, whatever. It's a little place. Nobody's heard of it. Everyone thinks it's in Wales. Um, it's up near Scotland. And right, so if I've got a carpet cleaner in Carlisle, actually, carpet cleaner is not a great one. Let's say a cleaner in Carlisle. We want to show when some types in cleaner Carlisle, but there's lots of things that people might type in that. In, that is like a bit longer tail. It might be office cleaners, home cleaners, house cleaners, residential cleaners, carpet cleaners, window, cleaners, all those sorts of phrases. So, but I want to know which ones people are going to put Carlisle on the end because those indicate that they've got a phone in the hand they want to speak to somebody. They're just carpet cleaning on its own is not as good as when someone types in carpet cleaning Carlisle. They're looking for a local service business. Now, if I want to get a list of all the search terms that people typically have a location on the end of, what I'll often do with the Google Keyword Planner is I'll type in carpet clean in London, massive volume, and I'll see everything that everyone, how people type stuff and put London on the end. <laughs> and then I'll just go and bid on those with Carlisle instead of London. Or another one, a very common one is like, uh, so if somebody is in Wexford, okay, so if somebody is in Cork and types in Architects Wexford, you'll want your ad to appear. So the fact that they type in Wexford is good enough. They could be in Cork. You have no idea why they're doing it. They could be doing it for their parent who's up there, doesn't know how to use Google, or they could be on holiday, or they might be looking to build a house in Wexford. You want to show because they typed in Wexford. The other one is if someone just looks for architects near me and they're in Wexford, so that you can do that. You can physically target it so that people are in Wexford when they do the search and they typed in uh, architects near me carpet cleaners near me so that near me is very common people will type that in and you could even just bid on your know, architects in, in exact match you can bid on architects phrase match you're going to start you're going to have to start adding loads of negatives of like jobs courses certifications degrees salaries all sorts but if you've got that big list it can help but i would start if you're a local service business i would start by insisting every single keyword has a location in it right so um and this, a florist in Dublin was a client years ago, and we bid on uh, florists, every location, florists, black rock, florists, swords, and flower delivery, every location. And it was really interesting. I said to her, look, if you're going to open your next franchise or whatever the heck it, whatever it is, three locations you should open your florist is like swords, Dunleary, and black rock, because more people are looking for flowers Mm. in those locations anywhere else is like is there a hospital is there a graveyard or just people more romantic there i don't know but <laughs> that's what i mean by like, what an amazing tool as a business yeah. owner you could just load up all this stuff and then go wow everyone's looking for that there i didn't know that okay very... so i'm getting distracted again but if you're a local service business then bid on cover the whole of ireland and bid on your service and then a location assuming there isn't two wrath mines in the country mm. okay that's your first campaign. Run that one. That's going to have lower impressions. It's going to, your ads are going to show less often. But when it does show, those people are more likely to convert into a phone call because they've typed in a location. And don't just bid on Wexford, but bid on maybe the town you're in. Sorry, there is a Wexford town, isn't there? Is there? There's a Kildare town. I know that. And then you've got all the little locations that you serve. And you could say, all right, so can you give me a location in Wexford? I don't, I'm not great with you. Glory. Gory. Oh, I've been to Gory as well. Right. So if someone's looking for architect Gory, you might not be in Gory, but you're prepared to travel to Gory. So what I would say in that ad is like Gory architect, maybe with a question mark, meaning are you looking for a Gory architect? When they click on the page, here's the trick. You get people to the landing page. The landing page is just the page that they land on when they click on the ad. You want to, you, 
what, what I like to do is get people to land and go, oh, thank God, I found what I'm looking for. Because when, what happens on Google is you search for architect Gory. You see an ad, it says Gory Architect. You click, you land on the page, you're like, where are you based? It doesn't say anywhere on the page where they're based. You have to scroll right to the bottom to see their address. And then if you see they're actually based in Gory, they're somewhere else or whatever. So like, it's quite disappointing. And you might go backwards and forwards trying to find one. And then you click on this ad, it says Gory Architect. You land, it says, looking for an architect in Gory, and you go, oh, thank God, yes, I am. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So the trick with Google Ads, uh, if I've got enough of these, I've got loads of them, actually. Right, I call it the holy trinity of paid search. The search term, the ad, and the landing page, okay? The search term, remember, is what they type into Google. Whatever that was, you put into the ad as the headline. First headline. So if they type in Gore, uh, architects Gory, it's, it's interesting. Most people type it in the service, then the location. I think from using the yellow pages and things like what's what, you know, people type in the what and then the where. Okay, I think we're trained that way. And then we go to Google and we type it in the same way. We go architects Gory, carpet cleaning, du Dublin. Okay, but they, they, I think an ad that says Gory Architect probably looks more like it could be a local firm, like a local business name. Like Architect Gory is kind of a weird name. It, that is probably not going to be a business name. So Dublin Washing Machine Repairs. Okay, that looks sounds like a, a business name. Washing Machine Repairs Dublin doesn't. So I prefer, if they type in Architects Gory, I would have Gory Architects in the headline. Then in the landing page, what I want to do is literally type, have them hit and see Gory Architect somewhere. Architect, yeah whatever yeah okay i've missed it right <laughs> i can spell it i'm just like looking at it with so architects gory gory architects gory architects bang whatever they see there they see there they see there mm. that's how you make it work and <clears throat> a nice little trick sort of trick um is if you've got a good techie they can have this web page set up so that this headline is dynamic so when people click on the ad in the URL for the ad, you pass the parameters headline equals looking for an architect in Gory. Okay. So when they hit the page, it change. And then if it's like architect Wexford, the ad says Wexford architect. When they hit the page, it says looking for an architect in Wexford. They go, yes, I am. Thank God. And then you say, we're architects. We serve Wexfords. Give it a call. You know, what you want to do if it's 80, 20, 80% 8 is probably your headline matches what they're looking for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just yeah. to let you know how that worked, we've, I worked in a company in BlackRock. We built 120 million keywords and ads of people looking for every different type of job in every location in the English speaking world. Okay. So that's millions of combinations, 120 million. Um, and only a million, I mean, our ads only showed for a million of those keywords, by the way, but we didn't know which million. I think we, we kind of overdid it. Low All went to the same landing page though. Exactly the same page. People were hitting the page and it said, looking for XYZ job in ABC location, looking for a architect's job in Chicago, question mark, looking for a carpet cleaning job in Edinburgh, question mark. So the headline matched, then it said something like, you know, sign up, we'll let you know when the job, blah, blah, blah. And we were okay. getting yeah. 20%, 25% of people signing up. It's a nice, simple page like that. And actually... I think, and it's it's very important as well. And uh, Sarah just asked, is, is a landing page a page on your website? It can be, I suppose. And it can be also, there can be lead generation pages and stuff like that. To me, but landing it, page it, is where it, people land. just yeah. simplifies it. It's where they land. When they hit the ad, that's where they land. The other thing I would say, and, and I agree with you, is, is saying having the detail on the top of the page as opposed to the bottom of the page. You know, it's often, a, it's the same. You ever go to a... Um, expo an exhibition and you look at the pull-up banners the information to contact them is always on the bottom and if they're at an exhibition they're usually standing in front of a table so you can't see the contact details so always we'll put your details on the top of the page so yeah. people see it because that's the first thing they want to they want to find out um, and yeah. totally agree someone else says as uh, barbara said how do we find out popular search terms and then yeah. Google keyword. Oh, sorry. Yeah, and uh, I was just about to say that. I think you just answered that in the Google keyword uh, planner as well. Right. And then someone on. else had said, I think it was Joanne had said, and then you answered this is, is if I'm advertising nationwide, do I need to separate ads out into each location? Yeah. Yeah. That is, that's how I will beat the competition. Yeah. Everyone's doing this. 
go below them. Go yeah. one layer below them. If they've got one ad, okay, this is, oh, I've got a few more drawings to do. <laughs> All good fun, and while right? you were doing your drawing there, I will ask you another question, and you can go back, we'll come back to it. If, All right, okay. Debbie asks, is if I have a brand name, uh, if I have a brand name uh, we want to rank for and don't want to give them a dedicated page on the website, uh, will it make a difference if we build a page for the ad that doesn't appear in the navigation anywhere. We are just looking for visibility for the people to pick up the phone. Uh, it's a bespoke product. I'm uh, I'm going to have to come back to that one if I didn't understand that. I'm, I'm going to have to, well, well, sorry, I'm going to have to see the context, maybe the kind of page or something to, to answer Oh, yeah, that well, one. maybe maybe you might hook up with Debbie or whatever you're going to have a chat with. Yeah, 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 100%. Yeah. probably the best. Yeah. Sorry the, to break your... One of the biggest mistakes that I see all the time when we go into accounts, first off, the campaign is called campaign one, ad group one, everything's default naming, you know it's going to be exactly how, <laughs> I think this is, Surely Google can explain it so people don't do this. I think Google does it because it's so simple to explain. I think Google does it deliberately to take money off folks, but that's, um, that's me being cynical. Um, we, right. So what people typically do is they have one ad group, uh, sorry, one ad group and they put loads, I'll put them here, keywords. So, uh, Gory architect, Wexford architect, Rathmines architect, all of those, and then they have a few ads here. And what happens is somebody types in Gory Architect and one of these ads could show, but which ad? I don't know, it rounds robins between them. Okay. But if somebody types in Gory Architect, you want the Gory Architect ad to show. Okay. If someone types in Rathmines Architect, you want the Rathmines Architect to show. But it ain't gonna work if you like that. So what people what you should do is one do it like this. So each of these is its own ad group. And this is like Gory Architect. The ad is Gory Architect. This keyword is Rathmines Architect and the ad. So when this ad gets triggered, keyword gets triggered, then this ad shows. You have more control. Everyone does it this way. They have an ad group and they put loads of keywords in it and then loads of ads or a few ads. Whereas what I'll do, if you've got like, if you're covering 100 locations, I will have 100 ad groups with 100 keywords, 100 ads that all match. But also not only to that, my ad sends people to the landing page that has the headline that matches what you're looking for. Yeah. Sounds right. First off, I like to do think, things that people don't think to do. They don't think to do that. They're doing this. Like surely is, is that, is that a lot more expensive or is, is, is expensive? How, in what way? If you're creating all of these different ads, like you're creating multiples of ads instead of saying, okay, right. I just want one particular word. Am I am I going off the wrong, the wrong kilt here? I'm just probably asking the questions. Everyone's probably saying, "No, no, 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 it's, no, I'm, 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 no it's good." Right? So How I'm just like that? Like I'm thinking of myself here. I'm yeah. thinking as well. Like if I'm doing an ad for different five different services, should I do yeah. five different ads? Like if I say social media. Yep. And say I'm putting an ad up for social media management. Do I do one for just social media or do I do one for social media and then do one for Twitter, for Facebook, for LinkedIn, for whatever? What did they search for? Give me an example. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. Social yeah. media, I don't know, consultant. They, right. Okay. So if you say to type social media consultant, the best mm. ad is going to be social media consultant. Mm. Possibly the county they're in as well. Okay. You know? So yes, yeah, so, so separate. Yeah. So, yeah. but let's just you know, all the locations and stuff. If they're typing social media consultant, uh, let's uh, let's put Dublin in. Social media consultant Dublin. Best ad is going to be Dublin social media consultant. Mm. Now, if they if they type in Twitter consultant, what's going to run better? What which ad is going to get a better click through rate? Dublin social media consultant or Dublin Twitter consultant? Yeah, yeah, I see your point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, it's all about getting the click through rate up. So, if you get the click through rate up by doing what other people don't think to do because they like they don't, they don't even think to do that or they go oh that'd be great oh my god i don't know how to do that or that'd be great i know how to do it but i can't be bothered well i'm gonna i'm gonna be doing that you know and if you do that you're gonna beat them yeah. your ad will have been more relevant to what they typed in you're going to get a better click-through rate. And as we discussed before, if you get a better click-through rate, your cost per click will go down. Mm -hmm. Okay. If your cost per click goes down, 
possibly you can afford to bid more, <laughs> you know, and go back to paying what you were, but it'd be in a higher ad position. But so regardless, then, if your click-through rate goes up, your impression share goes up, your ad's going to show more often and the other people's ads are going to show less. Yeah. So it's all about, it's, it, honestly, Google is that simple. Whatever they type, all right, okay, so this is the search. So really, it's, it's the keyword planner is the, is the, is the, is the perfect place because if you're using the keyword planner you're finding out what people are searching for and yep. then you're able to target ads to them yes you're able to say okay this is what most people are looking for so then you decipher down how you can i suppose differentiate yourself from the other ads that are thing uh, you know how i differentiate by them. default i differentiate by being more relevant mm, mm. whatever they're typing in i put in the ad yeah. yeah. Someone asked the question: Are breadcrumbs useful? What do you mean by breadcrumbs? Yeah, I, I'm presuming that it's like follow. It's, it's following on. Um, uh, I, I don't know. Maybe you can, uh, Pascal. Maybe you can uh, be a bit more um, direct and let is us that know. Bread, that is that breadcrumbs in the website when you land and you? Tell I think you. Yeah. It, I think that's. I think that's what you're talking about. Yeah. Well, if you get people to the page, your goal is you have one goal. Typically, you you should have one goal. Ideally, it makes more sense if you have one. Like we could have a few. They, want, they can call that number, or they can inquire. Mm -hmm. But right, so a landing page. Um, if people land on a page and they haven't got navigation and menu and stuff, yeah, maybe that works. And people will scroll down. Oh, yeah, this is brilliant. I can see all the things I want, and I will tap to call, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes it makes it more legit if there's a menu. Just feels more legit, and if they can, they can browse. They can never look at your testimony. I want to do it in my, you know. Some people might want to check things out themselves. I'm actually quite disappointed when I go to a website and there's a menu and I click in it, and just brings me further down the page to a specific yeah, point. I, have to I feel cheated. Time. I'm like, <laughs> I wanted to find it. I've already read that, and now I click and I'm, I'm reading the same stuff again. Yeah. So like, if you have like a, a full website that has like home page, services page, testimonials, about page, which is about them, not you. You know, it's about how you can help them, not about mm -hmm. you, how long you've been in business and stuff like that. And then you've yeah. got like contact page and then maybe you've got the news and whatever, but basics page for a local lead, a local service is like five, you know, homepage services, testimonials, contact us about, there you go. Mm -hmm. And if people can flick between them, it just feels legit, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, so if and there then, is the breadcrumbs and it helps people navigate and it just makes them think it's a bigger site or whatever, great. But remember your goal is to get them to do something. Yeah. And then the other question uh, Karen asks is, is, can you have a budget for a campaign instead of for the different ad groups? Right. Uh, the, but the budget is set at the campaign level. So for people who haven't looked in Google Ads, you have an account. You can actually have lots of accounts. But you've got an account. It's where all your billing is set up. Um, within the account, you have campaigns. Let me go into this. Right. So... You might have an MCC at top level. I, I do as an agency. You could have yourself where you have lots of accounts underneath and you've got an account. Under the account, you have campaigns. Ooh. And under that, you have ad group. And in, sorry, I should have done this sideways. In the ad group, you have the keywords and ads. That's how, that's how I set the one-to-one -one relationship between a keyword and ad. That keyword, oops, will trigger that ad. That keyword will trigger a different ad. Right. Campaign is where you set your budget. You could have a shared budget across all your campaigns rather than set, you know, you might have 10 campaigns each with a 10 euro a day budget, but maybe you only want to spend max 20, but you don't know which one of the campaigns is going to get it. So you can have a shared budget across all of them. Mm. Okay. So you, you set your bid, your, your budget at the campaign level. Is there other things at the campaign level where it's targeting? Is it like this one's a UK campaign? This was an Ireland campaign. This one's a Wexford campaign, etc. Yeah, that's at the campaign level. If I'm like, it's, it's trickier in the UK, in, in Ireland because it's kind of small. But if I'm doing something in the US and we're targeting something like payday, payday loans, that is massively what we'd call short head. A lot of people just type in payday loans on its own. You can do payday loans, Chicago payday loans, Texas payday. Yeah, there's a little bit of volume, not much. Most mm -hmm. people just type in payday loans. What I'll do is I'll do what people don't think to do, don't want to do, don't know how to do, is I will create 50 campaigns, one per state. Okay, so there's the US, and I'll, have, I'll just divide it in 50 campaigns, and I'll bid on payday loans in each of them, in exact match. So they typed in payday loans. And my ad will say payday loans, uh, brackets, TX for Texas. So my ad will pop. They'll be like, oh, blimey, payday loans for Texas. 
when yeah. click on the landing click on the ad go to the landing page you say looking for payday loan in texas and they go yeah i am actually cheapest uh, wow <laughs> everything else is the same mm. but my ad pops compared to everyone else's they're just talking about payday loans mine stands out a bit or might have free shipping to texas it's actually free shipping everywhere yeah but they're like oh wow free shipping to texas brilliant they land on the page looking for a chair with free shipping to texas great so i'm just making everything a little bit more relevant than what other people are doing yeah that's yeah. that's the trick um okay i wanted to kind of not leave you without having a framework for how to how to how to proceed with this if you were to go and do it right so i'll start yeah, by saying we are we are we are about half 10 now, so. <laughs> yeah i know i know thanks for staying with me everybody <laughs> and it is it's it's great and hopefully people are getting value from this as well because i know i am and i think it's just phenomenal i, I, I could keep going information. Oh, goodness you have me for half a day at some point i'd love to a flip chart and a blah and a workshop and I, I would do best when people throw loads of questions at me because the brain just starts going mm. but um this right this is super important okay I, I, what do i call it i call it the search funnel when people go to google this is what's happening right this is going to get a bit tight okay the searches so barbara you go to the keyword planner you find out what people are searching from. It gives you estimated search volume, gives you estimated bid prices. I take it with a pinch of salt. I look at it and go, oh, there's more, f more for them than them. And uh, jobs is pretty low cost per click. Um, asbestos removal, holy Moses, that's very expensive. All that kind of stuff, yeah? It's just relative. But I don't know what I'm actually going to get charged. I'd, and also, just because there's a thousand searches a month, I don't know what my impression share will be. What if my impression share is 50%? And I only get to show 500 times. What if my impression share is 10%? I only show 100 times. So I don't know. So I, don't, I could get really excited about the number of search, the search volume that Google says, but I don't know how often my ads will show. And the amount it will show is how much I'm bidding on, what my click-through rate is, what my impression share is. I mean, sorry, my impression share will be depend on how many people are bidding on it, how good my CTR is compared to theirs, all that stuff. I don't know. I literally need to run it. So I'll use a keyword planner to get data, and then I load it. And I load a campaign with 10 euro a day budget, five euro a day budget. And then what I do is I count impressions. How many, impre how many times do my ads show? That's what's important to me. Just because more people look for Immigration Lawyer London than Immigration Lawyer Bristol doesn't mean I can get my ad to show more often. It's damn sight more expensive and competitive for London, even though it's bigger. Yeah. So I need the data as a business owner. I need to know what, people, what am I ads showing for? Then we're going to get clicks. And I hate calling them clicks, by the way. I prefer calling them visitors. Yeah, I talked to all my clients. I said, yesterday, with this many, last week we had 200 visitors for this cost. Yeah, I don't want to talk about clicks. They're people. Okay, so those clicks, and, some of those clicks and visitors, sorry, there's, a, there's this damn funnel that everyone keeps going on about, going on here. It gets narrower. Okay, so searches. We don't show for all of them there's an impression share where we lose some then not everybody's clicking on our ad that's a click-through rate okay then not everybody who visits the page turns into a, maybe a prospect or a lead or whatever we want to call it or a sign up or something okay and by the way the guy who was talking about b2b as soon as i heard b2b i, I thought of something and i can promptly forgot if someone visits your website the chance of them actually converting into a lead inquiry right i've got stuff running at 30 percent people signing up i might show you that land, landing page shortly but it might be five percent might be ten percent might be twenty percent but there's a good percentage not filling in your inquiry form but they visited your website now if it's b2b what could work so if somebody's looking for a hr consultant who's looking for a hr consultant it's like i'm not it's typically a bigger business okay they might have their own ip address their business might have an IP address. They might be in their office on the company internet doing that search. In which case, when they hit your website, their IP address can be, well, Google Analytics picks up what the IP address is. It can be some software running, we do it for some clients, where you do a reverse IP lookup and it literally, yeah, these, like an engineering firm in the US, every day they get an email saying, yesterday, these other engineering and architectural firms visited your website, yeah? And they go, mm. oh my goodness. And it tells them what page they looked at, how long they looked at it, and if they visited in the last 10, you know, just, oh my goodness, they're coming quite a lot. Maybe you should ring them. <laughs> they haven't contacted you, but somebody there. And if you, if we do it right, you seem to have lost that. You can find out what the keyword was. So they were, oh, look, they were looking for a um, mechanical engineer in Texas, that engineering firm. Maybe they want some help. 
you know, getting approval on designs or whatever the heck, right? So if you're if you're the, the HR person, if you're doing B2B, this works for B2B because a business has its own IP address. If if they got me visiting their website, it's just going to say Vodafone. Mm. Someone from Vodafone visited your website because <laughs> that's our broadband. Or someone from Dublin Airport. No, I'm sorry. It wasn't Dublin Airport looking to hire Alan for their social media. It was somebody in the airport on their Wi-Fi. Yep. Mm. Okay. So some people turn into prospects and leads. Then I like to call the next ones buyers. They turn into a buyer. They bought, bought from you, but once. Okay. They bought from you. And I like to think of the first purchase as a test. Both ways. You know, Do I want to work with you? Do you want to work with me? Again. And after that, they might become a customer. To me, a customer is someone with a custom of buying from you. So that's the repeat business. They're a customer, a repeat business. First time they buy from you is brilliant. Love it. Better if they buy from you again. And then some of those people are going to become champions. They love you so much. They refer you to everybody, which is where. So this part here, everyone talks about the front end of your sales funnel, back end of your sales funnel. This is your back end. This is your front end. I said this was going to get messy. This it's repeat business. Oh God, why did I do it over there? Right, so these are repeat business. Champions, well, actually, referrals can come from quite a lot of places. But see this R plus R? I was told by a, this great business consultant, Blaise Brosnan in, in Ireland, R plus R equals profit. Repeat business and referrals is your profit. So Google Ads is brilliant at getting people to your website. Possibly referrals, so they've typed in your brand name. Brilliant. Get them to deal with it. Up to us as business owners to get them to buy on the page and keep them as a customer. You know, repeat business and referrals. That's how we'll grow. So a lot of clients, they will, like, they'll spend a bit each month on getting uh, people from Google Ads or social media and whatnot. And they might get to the point where it's like repeat business and referrals what keeps them going and the google ads they can just put it on minimal and it just brings in the occasional new client or new sale um right so if you imagine this as like the search funnel then the framework to get started is uh, you as a business owner do some keyword research find out what people are looking for get it oh my goodness sometimes it gives you three thousand suggested searches and you're going through it going i never thought of people search for it like that what is that why why are they searching for that what does that mean what are they thinking um, it'll give you a lot of junk as well. So don't just load them all, but you look through them all. You get loads of great ideas. Like, so subscription boxes for dogs. I was doing the research. So we're bidding on their brand name. That's the first thing to do. Right? So when you get started, bid on your brand name, do that, get a great click through rate, um, low cost per click, get your account going. Then bid on things that look like a buyer search and they're looking to buy. So like if you're selling a, month, a dog subscription box, the searches, I, I, there was like, whatever, 300 and I eyeballed a lot of them anything that had monthly in it monthly dog something was good dog box you know, it was okay like subscription so monthly and subscription with the word bo uh, dog was good there was people typing in monthly dog toy box I was like oh, okay they don't quite do toys it's not just toys it's toys and food. okay that's kind of good we'll go for that because it says monthly they're looking for a monthly thing so by me looking at them, you can see like patterns of what people are searching for. That gives me an idea and, and the business of like what to load up. That gives you a clue, but you need to load it and then count the impressions. And I've said before that like, the counting impressions are cheap because you're just counting how often the ads show. And if you're if you had like let's make it easy, hundred impressions last week for a particular keyword, and the impression share was fifty percent. Well, we know there's two hundred actual searches that that week. All right, so you looking at your impressions and your impression share, you can work out how many searches there were and it doesn't always match what the keyword planner says you know it would tell me that there's no zero volume for something i'm like oh, i'm getting like 400 a month for clicks for this is brilliant yeah. so I, what i do is i get all the, the the keywords from the google keyword planner i've analyzed them figure out what's good which is junk like google's really you know trying it on <laughs> i'm not going to bid on these things load them i load them all might load them all in one campaign, put a same bid price, one euro bid price for everything and like 10 euro a day. And I'm going to watch Well, I'll come back to it in a week, see what happens. Well, actually, I'll probably watch every day because it's just interesting. <laughs> the first time you get a click, it's like, ooh, someone clicked to my ad. And then first time you get a, uh, a lead, it's like amazing. Each one of these is like a first. It's brilliant. But you're working your way down here and you don't need to spend a lot to find out what people are searching for. And then you as a business owner, you look at it and go, right. I'm now going to turn off all that stuff and focus on that one keyword. 
okay? I think that's got enough volume. Our impression share is kind of low because you, your impression share can be low because you're hitting your budget every day. If you've got 10 euro a day budget, you might hit your budget by before noon, okay? So you turn off all the other ads and let that particular keyword get all the budget. And now what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the clicks. You might even increase your bids, increase your budget, trying to get a bit volume through of people looking for architects gory because there's so many people looking for architects gory for whatever reason maybe there's a grant just come out to everyone in gory and they're all like wanting to get their conservatory done or whatever i don't know okay so you've you found that you go and just focus on that and now you have the search intent dialed in you know what they're searching for all of them and you you look at your page and go great it does say looking for an architect in gory but it doesn't have a picture of gory let's actually create a page for gory and put a picture like nace i live in nace there's a big ball isn't there everyone knows about the, the nace ball so maybe you create a specific page, but the, you've got a business case, the data, the market intelligence, the people who are searching have told you this is what they, there's a high volume, this is what they're searching for. You can get into your page. Now you make a page, you've got a business case and you're trying to get those people to now inquire and contact you, fill in the form. Now you get to split testing. Well, do I put a picture of me or do I put a picture of the, the nice, prop, uh, you know, conservatories of bill or whatever the heck it is, okay? So then, and what you're doing is you're using that st- dialed in search intent that's the same every week 10 years later they're still searching for washing machine repairs Dublin probably the same people now they probably circled through but people today not going to be the same people in a month but there's those people are still going to react the same way to the ad so that's what the beauty of like Google ads is once you've got it dialed up the same people keep coming through and now you're using those people to try and figure out well how do I get to in contact me damn it how do I get that? Oh, right. Now I'm starting to get leads. They're costing a lot, but if I can convert them quick, well enough, then maybe that's okay. So then like, well, actually Andy, they, they, everyone's loads of pe- people are ringing, but <laughs> it's junk. I don't want junk phone calls. I'm like, okay, how do I, what are they saying? What are this? Like, so examples like pest control in London, somebody said, well, look, people keep thinking we're the council. Like they're typing it. They, they, they think we're one worth council trying to get rid of the, the, whatever the the what the bees or something thinking that the council will do it for free the council isn't free but the fact that they are saying are oh, you ones with council with pest control and they're like no mm. we're not they can't they can't convert them into a sale because they're just on the cheaper end <laughs> okay so what he said to me they give us that one clue it's like oh council we added council as a negative minus council so don't show up if someone types in council and bang his phone calls were getting better I get a, I get, I'll get a slap if there's too many phone calls in the junk because nobody wants to run junk phone calls. It's really, it really is about listening. It really is about listening and looking at the data, isn't it? And I yeah. just that's the impression that I get. Well, you know, uh, impression. <laughs> um, it, it really is about literally looking at this and looking at Google from a different perspective where we would go to Google to find stuff, yep. whereas we're going to Google to learn stuff now. Yeah, as opposed to you go to Google to find stuff. Okay, people go to Google to find stuff. Go to Google, Amazon to buy stuff. Mm. So that's why you know richest man in the world kind of thing. But we, the thing is, we have all used Google. We've all been frustrated. the The elephant yeah. in the room is like we love Google, but we hate it at the same time because we can't find what we're looking for. We do a search and we we don't bother reading everything. We just scan. We just mm. scan for the what we typed in and we click it. Some people might read it and click. It's so if you echo back what they're looking for and then they click and then you smack them in the head with the baseball bat, this is exactly what you typed in. They're like, Oh, brilliant. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Then they come awake and then they start reading your page. If you make it hard for them, hold on. You're in gory. Do you serve? I don't know. I'm confused. You just say, we serve that location that you just typed in. Brilliant. I love it. You just don't make it think simple and smart. Keep it simple and smart. Honestly, that's, that's what I was trying to say at the beginning It's a lot simpler. It's like, give people what they're looking for. If they're looking to buy something, look at Amazon's pages. It's like, here's the image, features, price, buy. You don't tell them why they need to buy an office chair, an ergonomic office chair, when they've hit the page searching for an ergonomic office chair. You know, they already know. They've decided they want to do it. But if somebody's looking for information, you know, like glamping, you don't send them a page and go, sign up, uh, uh, book now. (laughs) <laughs> you can have to sell them on like why glamping is a good, well, no you don't sell them you give them information they're an info seeker they've got a cup of coffee in their hand they're looking for information 
Yeah, um, and it goes back to the blue jumper, red jumper scenario. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Of, you know, if I have a red jumper, that's that's what I want. And you know, and I click on that. I want to buy the red jumper. I don't want to buy the blue jumper. If the blue jumper's there, why are you yeah. sending me to the page of the blue jumper? I want yeah. the red jumper. So it's yeah, 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 yeah. And what a lot of people talk about. Hold on, where is it? From here to here, or sometimes it goes straight to buyer. You know, if it's e-commerce. People talk about their landing page conversion rate. I don't know if you hear that a lot. People talk about, well, what's our landing page conversion rate is 25%. It's like, Andy, got the best uh, landing page for our emergency plumbing service in Dublin. It converts at 25%. And I just kind of want to silently, well, mentally slap them. No, no, no. Your landing page doesn't convert at 25%. If I sent people looking for car insurance to that page, how many phone calls are you going to get? Mm. You're not going to get any. If I send people looking for Caribbean cruise to your page, you're not going to get any. The landing page doesn't convert. The landing page just sits there. It's the person that converts. The person converts from being a visitor into a, like a prospect or a lead. They convert from being a prospect or a lead into a buyer. They convert from a buyer. Right? It's the person that converts. It's all people-centric. You know? We don't call them clicks because then you forget what's going on. You're getting a visitor, a human being to your page will they convert so what that person meant to say when instead of saying oh uh, landing page converts 25 percent," they should have said people who visit our landing page looking for an emergency plumber convert into leads at 25 percent so if i i might if i can I'll, I'll, I'll drop it in. hold on let me just try and show you hold on how do i do this again ah, i'll show that one that's that page that's that site over there you can see that Mm. Right. I am sending visitors to that page, but I'm not going <laughs> to. This is how people say it wrong. My page has a conversion rate of 30%. It doesn't. People visiting that page sign up 30% of the time. Okay. And you look at that page, how simple is that? Right. Because it's an, it's an info seeker search. So, uh, I don't know, get curry tips, get curry recipes straight to your inbox. Somebody might, that's an example. That's not what it was. Somebody might search for curry recipes. Your ad could say, by the way, I haven't tried this, so I don't, don't actually know, but I know there's high search volume for curry recipes, massive. Every single type of dish, there's loads of people on Google searching. Okay, you could, I would love to test this at some point. You could run an ad that says, get curry recipes straight to your inbox as the ad. So if someone types in curry recipes, they see an ad said, get curry recipes straight to inbox. And they go, oh, okay. I like that. They click. They come through. It says, get curry recipes straight to inbox, enter email, get tips. It's kind of like the checkout page on a on an Amazon. <laughs> you know, oh, okay. Yeah, that's the thing that I, I clicked the ad. It said, buy office chair for 299 Click, buy 299 Click. There you go. So what's happening here is the visitors, I'm not only am I targeting the right search terms that are typing in, but my ad is actually saying, get XYZ tips straight to your inbox. They click, they come through, and then they get into their email address, about 25 to 30%. And a lot of people will be looking at me going, Andy, but you, where's all your sales copy and your this and that? And I'm like, well, my ad did it. And the search term was kind of, they were searching for XYZ tips. So I'm just giving them what they're looking for. That's what Google, it, Google ads is all about, giving people what they're looking for and kind of getting out of the way. Like I said before, if, if you're a bar owner, someone comes into the bar, it's like, shut up and take the order, you know? Yeah. Um, I'll stop sharing that. I just want to make sure that I've got all the main things. I don't want you going away with your head popping. <laughs> I'd say it is at this stage. So many people are like, there's just there's great conversation going on here. And uh, uh, Karen said, Andy is amazing. So generous with his knowledge. Uh, would live to, would love to leave a testimonial. So, um, yeah, I, I think look, we, we're, we are sitting here and I know uh, we're, we're way over time, but I think everyone has enjoyed it. And thing, have you any uh, final pieces uh, that you want to... Uh, add in there before we finish Me, up. Um, I'm aware I've thrown a lot at you. I'm hoping that you've got a main, the main theme is that this is an amazing tool and it, to find out what the market is looking for so you can sell it to them. And then also what the market is looking for information wise, so you can give them information, get them on an email list then, and then you know, build a relationship with them and then sell it to them, you know, potentially. Okay. So it's a brilliant tool. It's not, 
uh, what you're trying to do and why you're trying to do it is not difficult. You're trying to give them what they're searching for. Mm. Literally, they typed it in, put it in the ad, put it in the landing page. How you do it? Yeah, there are millions of different ways how you do it. That's less important. You go on to YouTube and you watch all those videos. They'll just baffle you with the science, and you won't know what you're actually trying to do and why. It's it's actually that simple. This is why I love it. I'm kind of a simple bloke. It's like plumbers jobs Dublin. Oh, I know what we're looking for. Plumbers Dublin. Oh, I know what we're looking for. Actually, you guys might want to meet each other. You know, <laughs> just one more difference. But there you go. Brilliant stuff. And Sinead said, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. It's been great. I have learned, uh, learned so much. Really appreci appreciate it. My pleasure. And how you explain it. Excellent. I can't wait to get going on Google Ads. So, uh, yeah, that comes in from Sinead. And also, Zeno said, thanks. Uh, um, thanks for brilliant info. Uh, great. Uh, thanks. Great insights and enjoyed the evening. And Debbie said, thanks so much to Andy, Alan and Barbara. Tomorrow morning, I'm reviewing my Google ads <laughs> and putting these tips into practice. Brilliant. And Joanne says, very, uh, very good. Andy, how can people reach out and contact you if they want to talk to you? In but honestly, time? best. In, we're all in the group, are we? We yeah, the, well, the, uh, honestly uh, to, into i presume you're going to put something a replay or something in there yeah if, we will. yeah you put that in i will answer in there if you've got any questions ask them in there because if you've got them probably other people have them i'll answer them i may even do a little video because i kind of got a bit confused i can share my screen i'm worried about losing everyone <laughs> i might just drop little videos to answer stuff you know someone might say like uh, barbara the Google Keyword Planner. I could put something in there or like wherever. So I'll be in the group um, and obviously you can PM me from in the group. What we might do is actually set up a unit uh, within the group mm -hmm. and then it means that we can put all of this um, all this webinar and then we'll also you can throw up the videos. I have in, no idea um, how to do that. Yeah, well, I can, I, I can work on that. I can work on that and give you details on how you do it. Right, right, also, right. guys, if you could maybe email me a testimonial about this evening and... Uh, we'll we'll get it out there and for Andy, um, I I put it up there in the chat. It's Barbara at whatswhat.ie. So just email me a test testimonial, a, a re Andy about this evening, and that'd be great. Yeah. Brilliant. And the other thing is, is of course, uh, Andy, um, it is digital insight not digital insights okay so guys yeah. so just it's digital insight <laughs> if you're looking for it um uh, if you look for the website for andy and as you said he's in the group and he is happy to uh, help out he's amazing i thank you so much for tonight i've learned so much and really? it's opened up my eyes and i definitely am going to be looking at things a lot different oh you, i hope i hope you go away and don't look at google the same again never i never will because and i just you know like i did a postgrad mm -hmm. in digital marketing and they did go in and they did talk about google and google ads and stuff like that but they never gave us any of this. They never told us any of you. So, you know, it's really simplified and it's so easy to understand. And, you know, and like, as I said, we put this video up. I'm just praying to God that it did work. I have been recording it, so I'm hoping that it will work. Um, but we will definitely be putting this up in the group and letting people know. And uh, it's, it's, you're just amazing. I, I, I can't tell you how good I really enjoyed that. I, oh, brilliant. I, I, brilliant. I actually thought yeah, to myself, I said, oh, okay. Thank you so much yeah andy for sharing the knowledge it was i could i could listen to you for another hour no problem <laughs> don't worry i could talk for another <laughs> four <laughs> you can well, probably tell honest i've been doing this 10 years i still love it i still yeah. love it it's so much fun it. it's fascinating just fascinating yeah. yeah and i think we will definitely be doing we'll have to do another one of these uh, very soon because it's uh, i think because there is uh, you know as you say there's so much in it but yeah. i think understand like what you saw tonight and what you said tonight is it's it's just yeah yeah uh, i would describe this as mindset this is the google ads mindset yes yes trademark i'm going to trademark whatever no this mm. is google ads. this is like you as a business owner going oh i get it now when you speak to get someone in your or team blah and they go oh well yeah i'm a geeky this i'm a geeky that and you'll be like whoa hold fire this is what you should be trying to do and why this is and then you'll, you'll be teaching them mm. yeah this is Google Ads mindset. This is for business owners. You as a business owner now see the power of a tool. You don't need to be doing it. Of course, you can learn how to do it and DIY it yourself. You can hire, you can outsource, whatever. But now you can see this as the tool. And honestly, whenever I start a new business project idea or whatever, I go and fire up a Google Ads account. I go, I go through that process. And that, that, that landing mm -hmm. page, 
I'm getting um, yeah, thirty percent. Uh, I'm getting five or a day, about 20, 30 email signups a day, or whatever. It's twenty wow. cents an email or something at the moment, you know. And I haven't sent, I've sent one email to them so far. It's been going two weeks. I keep forgetting it's running, and I'm, I've got about four hundred signups so far. Well, no. I definitely would be telling the half offline here. <laughs> <laughs> but look, look, Barbara, uh, Bar everybody, I am like, um. If you've got any, any questions, just add them in the group. Or I love talking about it. You can tell. Mm. And like, if anybody, like Debbie, if you want me to look in your account, I can do that. If you, it's up to you. If you want me, we could record me and you looking at it and drop it into the group or the private group or which, the uh, VIP mm -hmm. group. Of like, this is right, depends what your product is. If you worry there's competitors or if like, if there's only one Debbie in the world, and actually there is obviously, but then and nobody can replicate you, then you might not worry about it. But I've done that mm -hmm. many times with people and they've been willing to do, and then drop it. And then when people see me wandering around, so, so far I've just been mostly this, haven't I? I mean, actually we haven't even got into a Google ads account yet, which I think is brilliant. Yeah. I think that's a brilliant. I think it's, I didn't want to get into a Google ads account. You know, the so, next, that's the next, that's the next stage as you say.